Enduro loop. I, I believe these guys actually had a race on this recently. And um, I just wanted to talk about this recluse because, you know, I, I used to have a recluse on two bikes actually. And the last two and a half years though, I ditched it because I wanted to learn decent clutch control. And a lot of guys have been saying, well, would you get one now? And, um, well, no, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna bag it, but the thing is, it's very weird once you've learned clutch control, trying to get the hang of this again. Now, when you try and do something fairly advanced, you've got used to dropping the clutch a certain way, and then the recluse messes with that. Now, it doesn't mean you can't relearn it, but, um, shit, this gets steep. <laughs> but you've got to do all this readjustment, and I keep wanting to drop the clutch, which I do, but then the recluse softens it, and so whatever you're trying to do gets stuffed up. And I heard some guys say, maybe you could put the heavier wedges in, and then it would work. I don't know. But, um, you know, I've got to say, I don't regret not having it anymore. And yet, look, they're, they're a very cool little thing. If, um, if you're not bothered with learning good clutch control, it certainly makes hard terrain a lot easier. You won't stall or anything. This, of course, is only my personal opinion. And for the tighter technical terrain, I enjoy. If you seriously want to develop your riding skills, I think it would be better to skip the recluse and simply learn how to use a clutch. It's taken two years of hard work, but I rarely stall my bike now and enjoy being able to modulate the clutch just how I want it, not in some preset fashion. I still have a long way to go with clutch skills, but I enjoy the challenge. However, if you don't have the time or inclination to develop your clutch technique, then sure, a recluse will help you a lot in harder terrain. There are plenty of rave reviews about the recluse, and I feel these are well deserved. However, if you focus on experienced riders with good clutch skills, you will see they feel increasingly ambivalent about the perceived advantages of an auto clutch. <laughs> What didn't I like? Whenever I tried to balance at a standstill or very slow pace, the recluse was often snatchy and throwing the bike off balance, even when I slipped the manual clutch to try and compensate. The cheese grater sound it was making isn't very pleasant either. There is always the old problem of stopping on a steep hill and the bike starts rolling backwards. And on low speed descents, the engine braking disappeared at low revs, so you need to keep lifting the throttle to re-engage the recluse. And you can't just stall the engine, of course, to help lock up the rear wheel for very steep descents. A huge issue was trying to jump larger logs with the recluse. Clutch control is very important for techniques like the double blip and zap, and I gave up trying to use the manual clutch at all. I could probably learn how to adapt the recluse settings to get good manual control back, but it was a headache with this loner bike. 
Also, the stiffer clutch springs needed for the recluse made manual clutch control very hard work, and my fingers were killing me at the end of each day. I fitted a Midwest clutch lever, which helped a lot, but those heavy clutch springs are hard work for manual clutch control. An interesting point, of course, is that I will probably end up using an auto clutch again. I'm currently using the super light clake one light -like clutch due to the early signs of arthritis in my fingers. And I know one day that even the clake will not be easy enough to protect my failing fingers. So I may wind up with a recluse again one day, although I do hear clake has a fully electronic clutch on the way, fingers crossed.